It's a rainy morning in the Hoopos. Uh, I don't know if this microphone on this little flip camcorder will pick up the sound of the rain or not, but it's quite a heavy shower right now. Another advantage to having a large greenhouse, hoopos, whatever, is you can garden even in the rain. So I'm in here this morning. I'm going to show you a few things that uh, I guess I did wrong and a few things that are being attacked by some sort of little critters, but I don't think it's anything too terribly serious. To begin with here, this uh, Chinese cabbages, the two kinds, the uh, Joy Choi and the one that I can never remember the name of. Let me see the tag here. Uh, Optica, Chinese cabbage Optica is the larger ones on the left here, and the ones on the right are, are Joy Choi. Uh, I've been calling Joy Choi a miniature. I don't know where I got that impression. I have had the seeds for years. I guess I've transferred something else in my mind to this. But I went and checked online. They're not uh, really a, a miniature uh, bok choy. They're just a hybrid type of bok choy, so I guess they're going to be fairly large when full grown. And I'm very pleased there is no bolting taking place. It must be because of the the fall. Uh, it's nice and warm in here, but uh, uh, decreasing daylight hours rather than increasing daylight hours, so I'm not having any bolting. But I believe I've planted these all too close together. Um, I've got five to a square foot for the Joy Choi and just one to a square foot of the Optica, which is probably okay for that one. But the problem being the uh, ones that are close to my patch of uh, beets that I planted from seed in here are crowding out part of the beets. So I'm going to be harvesting a row, uh, which would be two of the uh, Optica and at least two of the Joy Choi. So I have my, my first real good size harvest out of here and I think I'll probably have to take out a few of the lettuce plants here as well. They're also crowding out the beets. I'm so pleased with the way the beets are growing. I don't want anything to crowd them out. I don't know if I have a chance for any decent sized beets in here. I don't know how long this will go into the fall when our temperatures start to drop but it looks like I'm at least going to get some good looking beet greens. So I only have the one tripod and it's in use still over here doing a time-lapse video of the uh, ripening of this cluster of uh, Buckby's new tomatoes. I've had some really nice ripe ones off this plant but of course the cluster that I selected are slowly ripening. They are getting much yellower now. Another few days of sunshine and they should be uh, ready to pick I guess probably a week or so yet to go but anyway I'm going to have to uh, do my harvesting and then do you an, an afterward clip and I also want to remember to show you some damage that I'm getting um, some sort of a little worm thing not the cabbage worm but something else is attacking a few things in here well it's not a bad little harvest I actually just ate one of the large leaves of the Optica Chinese cabbage very tasty and what I'm going to do with this, maybe I'll, I'll stir fry or steam it. I'm going to eat it while it's fresh, sometime today anyway. And I took out a few lettuce plants. Those would be nice to have. And this is the uh, Joy Choi here. They're not very big yet, but still. They will be nice added to whatever I do with them this evening for dinner. And I'll give you a little look at the bed back here. It made quite a difference. More space now for the for the beets all the way around. They eventually have to take out a lettuce plant or two as they continue to grow, but for right now that's that's good. The the beets are all getting more more light and more space to grow, and that was what I wanted to do. Let me show you something that's happening over here with this particular variety is a a cos C O S, which is a, a romaine type lettuce like you use for Caesar salads and whatever. I like that type of a lettuce, but they, they're starting to sort of hit up into the, what the romaine looks like. I selected eight of the seedlings, all came out of the same seed packet, and one of them, I guess you can see that, has the same characteristics as the other uh, romaine type lettuce. It's sort of growing vertically. It's going to make a head, but it's a uh, a green and a red speckled leaf, so 
I don't know what that means. It was in with the seed anyway, so a new variety, I guess, of uh, romaine lettuce. Now I'll give you a little look at what I'm talking about for some of the uh, damage that's happening in here. This is in the section of brassicas. The uh, I think that these particular ones are, are broccoli. And all of a sudden I started noticing leaves that look like they've been shot through with a shotgun or something. I guess that shows up so you can see it. Anyway, I've been flipping them over and I've already done it this morning so there isn't any little guys on there. But it's uh, a little worm, caterpillar type thing. Not green like the cabbage moth caterpillar is. So it's, it's something else. I leave the door open here in the most sunny days so that uh, a lot of the humidity will, will leave the hoopos because I'm, I'm concerned with it being too humid in here that all of a sudden I'll start to get fungus and mold. But some sort of a flying creature has come in and laid its eggs, I guess. Anyway, the problem isn't too serious because there aren't that many plants here. Whenever I see the damage, I just flip the leaves over and uh, squash the little guys that are trying to eat the plants. And it's not happening on very many plants. I've seen it on maybe three different plants. Earlier I had some slug damage down on the Chinese cabbage. Put a little slug bait out and seemed to have eliminated that problem. Now I'll just give you a little general shot of the, of the bed here so you can get an idea of how things are really filling in nicely. Down at the far end that's the lettuce and Chinese cabbage which are probably doing better than anything else in here. They've really, they really seem to like the warmth and the, and the hoopos so that is good. Some of the uh, tomato plants here are, are more and more ripening all the time. They're all heirloom varieties get a look at those in there. That's black cherry. I've had quite a few off of them. They're ripening very nicely. Uh, next door to that, I believe, is Oregon Spring. I lost the... Uh, I guess I didn't lose them. I didn't label these particular ones up in the small greenhouse. They're, they're all labeled out here. I just have to look at them and guess as to what they might be. And next door is the Buckbees New, the one that I just showed you that's ripening. It's got... Uh, I've had a couple of ripe ones off of it already, and then there's there's some that are, are riper than the ones that my camera's looking at. And the thing that I really like, they're terribly small, I'll have to plant more of them next year, but they are so good. These are a variety called Matt's Wild Cherry, and uh, there are a lot of ripening tomatoes on this one plant. I have a couple of plants, I think, up in the other, up in the other greenhouse, but... Uh, they're so sweet and tasty, I eat them just like candy. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. And uh, I appreciate anybody's comments or questions. I'll try to answer your questions if, if at all possible. Talk to you later with another update. Bye-bye.